Greetings. Well, last Sunday, by way of introduction, as we came to uh, the 23rd Psalm, I uh, offered three major points. First, that King David was the author of Psalm 23. And David was um, a shepherd before he was a king. So he knew how to care for sheep. And he describes his relationship, therefore, with the Lord in those terms. David saw the Lord as his shepherd. We see that in verses 1 and 2. Because he knew that he was needy. He knew that sheep were needy, that they need a shepherd. David saw the Lord as his guide. We see that in verses 3 and 4. Because he needed guidance. He knew that both personally and as a king. David saw the Lord as a gracious pro provider and a host, and he presents that picture in verses 5 and 6, because David saw God as being his protector and welcoming him into his eternal home with him in glory. Well, secondly, we saw that the psalm was written about Jesus, and that David used metaphors uh, to describe Jesus that were appropriate to each of the roles that he uh, just pictured him in, as a shepherd, a guide, and as a gracious protector and host. What most of us would not see in this very short psalm is that there are 10 imperfect verbs in that psalm. Now, an imperfect verb is one in which the action that is being described never ceases. It doesn't stop. In other words, the uh, how this is appropriate to us is that once the Lord is your shepherd, he never stops doing for you what he did for David. Think of this. God meets your needs, not your wants, but your needs. David says, I shall not want. God provides uh, for your rest. David says, he makes me lie down. God provides for guidance. He leads me. He restores your life. David says, he restores my soul. God is always for you. Even though I walk through, and the word walk in biblical language means to live, just our journey in life. He restores your life. He restores your soul. He takes away fear. I will fear no evil. God, God, God's power protects and comforts. David uses the symbol or the uh, metaphor of the rod and staff. They comfort me. God provides for you. David says he prepares a table for me. God provides an abundant life. My cup overflows. Notice it's not that it's just full. It's full to overflowing. God's goodness and love is constantly surrounding you. Goodness and love follow me all the days of my life, David says. And God provides an internal home, eternal home in his presence. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> now to be fair, or at least honest, grammar can either bore you or scare you to death. But in scripture, grammar rules. Because grammar in scripture makes a passage come alive, or alive uh, with meaning. Just think of the significance of those imperfect verbs. They're not just words. They are words that change our lives by what they teach us about God and his relationship and his care for us. God is teaching us by the way David constructs this short psalm, both in its content and in its grammatical form, that God is always with us. Not when, just when things are difficult or when we cry out because we don't know what to do. God is always with us. God is always providing for us rest, internal peace, contentment. If the Lord is 
our shepherd. We have his presence and his provisions today and for all of eternity. Now, thirdly, this psalm was written as a message to um, anyone who has the Lord as his or her shepherd. That means both an Old Testament saint and a New Testament saint. That makes Psalm 23 profoundly unique. Take note of the fact that it's only six verses long. Look at some of the other Psalms and they go on for page after page. The brevity of this Psalm accentuates its power. It's powerful message for all those who act on its truth because it shapes our view of God. Now, there was one additional point last week that we said we'd deal with this week, and that is the fact that David begins this psalm with the words or the statement, the Lord is my shepherd. And David is sharing his relationship with God through Jesus, the Messiah, um, in, in, in his relationship with him, in his terms. Well, how do we make his terms, his description, apply to us? We must meet the re prerequisites for making this relationship true for us in our lives. Then we can say, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, David was an Old Testament saint, wasn't he? Therefore, he established and maintained a relationship with God through uh, the Old Covenant, the provisions of the Old Covenant, the Mosaic Law. Well, we don't do that. Jesus fulfilled the law because humanity could not, cannot. It requires perfection, and only Jesus lived a perfect life. But we can make a relationship with God through his new covenant. Faith in Jesus' blood rather than faith in the blood of animal sacrifices, as we find in the Old Testament. Faith in God's provision for dealing with our sin problem is the sole requirement for making God our shepherd through Jesus. This is God's indispensable requirement for anyone to be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, David goes on in that verse and he says, I shall not want. <laughs> Now, to be honest, I could get lost here, and so uh, let me be very concise and precise. If Jesus is our shepherd and we do not want, then we must establish what it means to want. What is equally implied in those wo words, I shall not want, is the truth that I shall be supplied with all that I need. Thus, if I do not have all that I want, I must conclude that what I don't have is either not good for me or not necessary for me. Or if it is, it shall be given to me when I will use it for God's glory at some point in the future. It will come. Now, in verse 2, David makes a couple of statements. One, my shepherd makes me lie down in green pastures. And two, he leads me by still waters. There was a shepherd named Philip Keller. He wrote a book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. And I want to share with you some of the comments that he made about these two verses. He writes that in order for sheep to lie down, and uh, they must feel safe and satisfied. And he gives four requirements that define uh, a sheep feeling uh, safe and satisfied. One, because sheep are timid by nature, they will not lie down unless they are without fear. How often are you unable to sleep or rest because you are anxious about some situation that you don't feel you can resolve? Because of their social structure, Sheep must not be at odds with any other members of their own flock, their family. Does not tension or uh, uh, conflict with someone nag at you so that you cannot have peace and rest? Why does the Bible tell us not to let the sun go down on our anger? 
because we can't rest when we're harboring ill will, hard feelings, or bad feelings. Thirdly, if a sheep is bothered by pests or parasites or is ill, they will not lie down. Have you ever tried to sleep in the summertime with a mosquito that snuck into the house and is buzzing around your ear? Well, and how well do you sleep if you're not well and you have a fever or you've been injured and you have a huge uh, bruise or black and blue mark and you roll over and lay on it and boom, you're in pain. Fourthly, sheep do not rest if they are hungry or thirsty. I was so glad to read that because it now explains to me my midnight raids on the refrigerator. In any case, our shepherd provides for our needs in our physical, our social, emotional, and spiritual areas of our lives. Remember those imperfect verbs? God never rests in his care for us. Jesus is our shepherd, and he provides for our physical needs. He taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus provides for our emotional and spiritual needs. He said, I came so that you might have life and that more abundantly. The Apostle Peter describes in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that God's power provides all that we need for both life and godliness. Jesus tells us, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. And Jesus qualifies those statements with the truth that life as a follower of Jesus, even having Jesus as our shepherd, does not mean that we will never face difficulties or have trials and tribulations. His point is that he will always provide for us in some manner and that he will always be with us. He never leaves us abandoned. In verse 3, David says he restores my soul and he guides me in the paths of righteousness. Here we have a picture of Jesus bringing us back to God when we wander away like a sheep. In fact, Isaiah, the Old Testament prophet, says we are all like sheep. We've all gone astray. And most of us <laughs> have done it more than once. So here's where Jesus' parable in Luke's gospel, chapter 15, the story of the lost sheep comes into view. Jesus says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one, does not leave the ninety-nine and go after the lost one until he finds it? Aren't you glad that Jesus is that kind of shepherd? He's not willing to lose one sheep. So even if you've wandered away, know this, he's coming to find you. Nowhere do we need to trust our shepherd more than when we face grave illness or death. David writes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in verse 4. And one of the great problems of the valley of the shadow of death is fear, fear of the unknown. Will I be swept away from God's provision? Will evil overwhelm me? And here is where the presence of our shepherd is most powerful, because we are the most weak. Jesus has faced death. Jesus conquered death. And so he leads us with confidence and experience. Jesus knows that death is not the end. In fact, it is really the beginning of being in his presence for eternity, if he is our shepherd, or being separated from his presence for eternity, if he is not. Well, now the picture changes from being a shepherd to being a host. Jesus is anxious to show us uh, the home that he has prepared for us, that he told us about when he was here. And God will honor Jesus in the presence of his enemies, those that mocked him and rejected him and persecuted him. You know, in the Old Testament, eating and drinking, having a meal with someone is a picture of a bond of loyalty and friendship. 
And so David draws on that image to describe for us the final step in following our shepherd. We will not be wandering sheep at that point in time. We will be friends with our shepherd. He writes, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse 6. What a blessing. Because dwelling in the house of the Lord forever is a picture of being with the Lord in real time, not just by faith, but face to face. It will be our eternal home because Jesus is there and we are there with him. You know, Jesus was a sheep and God cared for him. Jesus walked the road that we are traveling today and he cares for us. We shall be with him forever in our new home, prepared by him for us. You know, it's no wonder that we love this psalm. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word and how it describes for us what our relationship with you can be if we come to you on your terms and build a relationship, a close bond of loyalty and friendship. And how you care for us. Never cease to care for us. Thank you for these truths, Father. In Christ's name, amen. Have a good week.